GCSE Poetry, War and Conflict, Kamikaze and Poems to Compare It To. Here is the annotated poem. Her father embarked at sunrise with a flask of water, a samurai sword in the cockpit, a shaven head full of powerful incantations and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. But halfway there, she thought, recounting it later to her children, he must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting on a green-blue translucent sea. And beneath them, arcing in swathes like a huge flag waved first one way, then the other in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swivelled towards the sun, and remembered how he and his brothers, waiting on the shore, built cairns of pearl-grey pebbles, to see whose withstood longest the turbulent inrush of breakers, bringing their father's boat safe. Yes, grandfather's boat, safe to the shore, salt-sodden, awash with cloud-marked mackerel, black crabs, feathery prawns, the loose silver of white baits, and once <clears throat> a tuna, the dark prince, muscular, dangerous. And though he came back, my mother never spoke again in his presence, nor did she meet his eyes, and the neighbours too. They treated him as though he no longer existed. Only we children still chattered and laughed till gradually we too learned to be silent, to live as though he had never returned, that this was no longer the father we loved. And sometimes, she said, he must have wondered which would have been the better way to die. So this is a rather long poem. It begins by referring to her father embarked at sunrise. Now, Japan is known as the land of the rising sun, and embark means to get on or also to begin something. So he is beginning a new chapter of his life. Both choices lead to a type of death. Shaven head full of powerful incantations. He is under the spell of patriotism and propaganda, not making his own decisions. The green-blue translucent sea. Now this is quite um, nice figurative imagery as readers. Uh, there's connotations of peace and tranquility in the colour imagery and it highlights how he doesn't want to deny himself, nor though he, those he will kill. The beauty of nature and the beauty of life. Shoals of, fish, of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swivel towards the sun. Now, sibilance implies a great sense of grace and peacefulness, as well as suggesting an elegant and graceful tone. Also works to increase the pace to make sure the poem is emotionally sounding. Figure of eight. Now, figure of eight is the symbol for infinity. This may be used to imply the eternal nature of nature, the infidelity of it, and how nature is infinite in comparison to the transience of humanity and life being brief and precious. So, a tuna, the dark prince, muscular, dangerous. The imbalance of power between humanity and nature is shown here. Even a kamikaze pilot, the epitome of bravery, senses the danger of it. Now, the pilot is a symbol of military power and determination, and it's not the most dangerous thing in the poem, a fishes. Now, this metaphor that a fish is so um, scary and deserving respect and honour emphasises the significance of nature and really the power between nature and humanity. Nor did she meet his eyes. Now, wouldn't meet his eyes. Eyes are apparently windows to the soul. And if you don't want to have access to someone's soul, it seems like she's ashamed of her own husband. She is cutting off that communication bridge with him and distancing herself from him as her daughter at will. And thus the impact of conflict is ongoing, passed down from generation to generation, almost eternalising the effects of war. Till gradually we too learned, learning about cultural values, to be silent, to live as though he had never returned. By living, he traded this for being forgotten and ignored. The story is not told by historians, but by a daughter who never knew him. The whole poem is quite speculative and suggests that the father physically survives, but is 
emotionally and socially dead to the community. Now let's look at the poet and the title. So the title, no, sorry, the poet is called Beatrice Garland and she introduces John Doan, John Clare and Sears Heaney as some of her writing inspirations and has won several prizes for her poetry. Now when writing Kamikaze, she was inspired into looking into the motivations as to why people want to die for their country. So if you're looking at the title, Firstly, it implies a sudden violence, particularly in strategic military operations. It relates to the Japanese suicide plots during the war, which has patriotic connotations. And it references an attack where those participants are willing to take risks and are sacrificing their own safety above others. So let's look at structure, form and language essay points. So we get the sense of conflict versus identity. Conflict between identities, such as the father and the soldier, is established. And then there's also the title, which primarily establishes his role as a soldier, whereas her father humanises him and shows that he does have a life outside of this mission. Now, again, we see this conflict between soldier and father and again the nature of conflict references back to war and they're established at the start as a transition from soldier to father now there is a danger of patriotism in the soldier and the poem shows how this leads to his death not only literally but metaphorically his death would have given him eternal glory in the eyes of society. However, though ch through choosing to live his life, his life has metaphorically died. This is quite the antithetical nature of making your community, your family, making people proud in war. So the best poem to compare it to, I think, is Poppy's. Why? Let's look at the similarities. Both poems convey the grave impact of civilians that war and conflict have including the psychological impact focus. In Poppies, the mother is grieving and suffering from the loss and emotional breakage. And through Kamikaze, the daughter is suffering from a life where she cannot know her father. They both display characters trying to process memories and how memory interacts with impacts of conflict. In Kamikaze, the, this is the speaker going over the memory of her father whilst trying to rationalise why he came back and why he ever left in the first place. And in Poppies, this is the main character going back over the memories of her son while trying to rationalise why he left. And the final point of similarity is that both poets offer non-conventional perspectives of war. Kamikaze is from the perspective of a daughter and Poppies is from the perspective of a mother. In terms of differences, both are suffering from loss. Um, one is the loss of a father more emotionally, and one is the actual physical death. And this contrast can really be explored in your essays as you describe what has more of an impact. Is it the psychological death or the physical death? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and for more videos, check out No Waffle GCSE. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.